So, there's a pandemic going around, but it's not the COVID pandemic. It's a financial illiteracy pandemic. And what I mean by that is, in today's generation, right, we have Gen Z before we had the millennials, before that, who knows, they're old. Basically, what's been going on is there's this huge mentality that the rich are bad and, you know, being rich just means you're a bad person. And there are some situations where that is true, right? There are many people who have a lot of money and they're inherently wealthy and they don't use it for the right reasons. They're not ethical. You know, they're basically only in it for themselves. People like that exist. But there are also people who are philanthropic you know, who build wealth for not just themselves, but their families, for the people around them, so that they can impact the people or the groups around them, right? If you've ever had a charity you really believe in, wouldn't it be nice to just have a couple extra hundred dollars or a couple extra thousand that you could give without feeling pain, right? And that's why we get into today's topic, which is creating generational wealth and how you can take certain steps to make sure that A, you're financially ready, and B, when the time does come, you're going to be able to take care of your, you know, your life cycle, your children, but also set the, set your children up for taking care of their children as well. So that's where you get this topic of generational wealth, wealth that is transferred through different generations. And all it takes is one person to set the rest of, you know, the lineage up for their future. Um, it's not hard to create generational wealth. It's just, it's really long. <laughs> um, basically what I mean by that is it's a game of patience. It's a game of dedication. And that's where the first issue arises, right? In today's climate, everybody just wants something quick. Everybody wants something now. You know, these YouTube ads are like, if you're working a nine to five, you're poor. And a lot of times, sure, you're probably not making the most money in the world based on your capabilities, but you know, that doesn't mean that everybody has to go open a business because if everybody owns their own business, you know, who's doing the work, right? It's not for everyone. Some people do want comfort and that's okay. This video is more for people who are willing to sacrifice a little bit more comfort um, to, you know, kind of set themselves up for the rest of their lives and their children's lives and their grandchildren's lives. That's the whole point, right? So there are a couple reasons why this mentality exists today. Um, like I said, the YouTube videos, the ads, you know, everybody's got to open a business. Everybody's got to do this. No, everybody doesn't have to do this. You are responsible for finding your own path. There's a million different ways to become rich. If you are very passionate about garbage, you can become the CEO of a garbage company and still make millions. You can still be passionate. You can still do your part, but that doesn't mean you have to make a meager wage, right? You can still position yourself to make more money. And, and we'll discuss different ways that you can take those steps. Another example of today is, is drop shipping, right? Quick, easy money. Sign up for my course. You're going to get this video. You're going to learn how to do it. You're going to make hundreds of thousands of dollars. My shop makes $500,000 in revenue every month. Right, that's revenue, but that's not profit, right? So today's climate is misleading the average person. It's making people feel like they have to do A, B, C, D, these really weird techniques. You have to go buy a course, you have to go do this. Now, don't get me wrong. There are a lot of good courses as well, but at the same time, it's a very saturated market. Now, saturated just means that there's a lot of people making money. It doesn't mean that it's, it's not a good thing to have, right? A lot of people have courses. A lot of people have a lot of knowledge. They want to share that. So be it. But we're in this world where there's some people even asking, like, do I have to watch this whole course? Like, yes, you dummy, you have to go work. If you're not going to put the effort in, how are you going to make the money, right? People just want that quick cash. And also the fact that the current stock market and with the way crypto is in its bull market right now, everything feels like it's in a lottery period, right? You throw in money, oh, I won, I made 200%. Or boom, I you know lost 40%, it is whatever, ha ha ha, I've got another unemployment check coming in. And that's the next reason. There's no way to lose when it comes to today's climate. You either have a job and you're making money and you're comfortable and you're adding to your resume, or you're working with nothing, right? You don't have a job, but you have unemployment. That unemployment check is coming in every month. You're also getting the stimulus. So by some means, you're making some type of income every month, whether it's through unemployment or through employment. So people just know that they have consistent money coming in. Oh, I'll get my check in two weeks. Not a big deal. So it's okay for people to lose money in the market. That's where the lottery mentality comes from that it's okay if I lose, I'm just going to get more in two weeks. 
but people don't think about what's going to happen when that unemployment check drops, right? Market conditions will change because there's not going to be as many people. I promise you in 12 months, whole stock market is going to be completely different and crypto obviously will be different because it'll be entering a bear market. If you have questions, shoot a message in the comments. We'll make another video about it. We'll answer all your questions. But as of right now, we'll continue with the ideology that the stock market and the crypto market are going to be completely different in 12 months because unemployment checks are going to stop. People are going to be going back to work. That means they have less time to study. That means they have less time to trade. You know, all of these factors are going to exist and they are coming our way. And when that happens, you're going to see 90% of people just drop off the map when it comes to investing. When that feeling of the lotto goes away, that's going to be a big change in our atmosphere. So there's really no way for you to lose right now if you do invest. But as we start heading towards this normal world, right, if we even remember what that means, we have to keep a couple things in mind, a couple different strategies that we can use in our own life to make sure that we're ready, our children are ready, and our grandchildren are ready. So going back to this topic of generational wealth, we talked about what it is, why things aren't looking good with the market, why things are about to change, and how we can prepare. This is the current segment. How can we prepare for the market that's coming up? So there's a couple of things. The first thing that I want to mention is live within your means. Now this can be a little tough because, <laughs> you know, we see all these flashy things. Everybody wants the nicest Porsche. You know, we want to get the nicest laptops, the nicest microphones, the nicest cameras. It's the little things that start adding up. And then we look at our monthly bill and we're like, wow, we spent $3,000 this month. I only make two grand a month net down a thousand dollars. So we get so used to this life of luxury that we stop looking at our bills. So living within your means has a couple different perspectives to it, right? Part of that is just minimizing your expenses. So you can do that by looking at what subscriptions you have. Uh, you know, if you have certain habits of your lifestyle that are expensive, right? I'm not going to be the same guy as everybody else on YouTube who says, don't spend money on coffee. I mean, you shouldn't, but I'm not going to mention it because that's just really something that everybody kind of already knows, right? If some people need coffee to survive, so be it. But understand where your expenses are going. You can use a number of apps, right? There's Mint from Intuit. There's Truebill. Uh, you know, there's a couple others that you can use for budgeting, for saving. Those are the two that I personally use. I'm not recommending them. I'm not getting paid to recommend them, uh, but they're options that I use. So if you did want to use them, there's a link in the bio. I don't think there's any type of referral program, but it's just a straight download link for you. So that's one way, right? Manage your expenses, minimize your subscriptions, make sure that what you're doing um, or excuse me, what you're spending is within your budget. And that also means that if you, let's say you worked during the pandemic and you got a raise, right? Your company said, look, we know that you could have taken unemployment. We know you could have taken the easy route, but you stuck with us. You helped our company, right? Like that ever happens. Uh, but they end up giving you a raise, right? You end up making an extra thousand dollars a month. That's amazing. That doesn't mean that you go and change your lifestyle to match those thousand dollars that that's being added because ultimately what's happening you're bringing in three thousand dollars you're letting out three thousand dollars what are you left with at the end of the month nothing and that's why you know god forbid you lose your job an emergency happens you have to step away you know you have to go tend for family so you can't work for two weeks there's no cushion right? You're literally living check to check. And while that can be nice sometimes because you have the latest goodies, you've got the latest Xbox, you know, you're happy, you've got all these material possessions. But the moment your money stops flowing, you're going to have to start selling things. And you're going to end up losing money on every single thing you bought because emergency versus patience, emergency, you get the money right away, but you get a lot less patience you get the money you're looking for but you know you're trading time for that that dollar amount so you really have to identify you know this is how i'm living do i have money in my savings account do i have six months of my living expenses put away just in case something goes wrong personally i'm aiming for 12. that's what i like to save up every time my financial situation changes so does the amount of money that i have for 12 months that's how I make sure that, God forbid, I lose one of my streams of income or, you know, I end up losing my job or, I, you know, something happens. You never know. An emergency happens. I've got 12 months of expenses to take care of me so that I have a cushion so that I'm ready in case, you know, something happens. I can bounce back. I can get right back to it. And it's a delay, 
but it's not a full stop and that's really important to pay attention to so that's that's something that you really need to pay attention to living within your means doesn't mean that you just don't have debt make sure you don't have debt that's a big big issue and and we'll talk about different types of debt in another video but overall we're talking about bad debt like credit card debt loans things you don't really need but you really want right need versus want type of factor make sure that you're minimizing all those expenses it's a lot greater than just money in money out it's also about money in way more than how much money is going out right you, that's how you start valuing the dollar and that's how you start saving and compounding the next option is to open a Roth IRA so a lot of people don't really know what an IRA is you can check one of our older videos I'm gonna link it right over here uh, but a Roth IRA is essentially a saving tool designed for your retirement now keep in mind that all the money you put into this is after tax however any profit you make within this account is completely tax free so let's say you compound six thousand dollars a year right that comes out to be five hundred dollars a month and you do that every single year or month for the next 40 years right you're 20 years old you go until 60. the withdrawal period starts at 59 and a half so if you take money out you get penalized but when you turn 59 and a half you can technically retire if you have enough money now what that means is let's say you compounded your money and you ended up making a million dollars in profit just off profit not how much you accrued not how much you put together million dollars was your profit you don't pay a single penny on that whole amount of million dollars and what that means is that goes straight into your pocket now keep in mind you don't always have to take out the full amount you can take out a portion and keep investing what that does is that it creates this unlimited bank bank what it does is it creates this unlimited bank account right you can keep taking money that money fills up you keep taking it it fills up you keep investing you keep it growing and that's the power of compound interest you let time work for you because when you're younger you have so much time right if you're 18 19 20 your biggest asset is your time and if you don't value your time nobody else will so respect the time equality respect the power of compound interest and realize that just six thousand dollars right if you can live without six thousand dollars live within your means to put that 6k to the side and put it into this Roth IRA you can end up saving millions and millions of dollars in that account and on top save all that money on tax so there's a ton of benefits again the video will be linked make sure you go watch it and learn more about Roth IRAs because it's a great tool for you to save money put it to the side and discipline yourself so it doesn't go missing and you've got it when you really really need it for when you retire so the next option is going to be life insurance so for many of you who think life insurance is a scam it can definitely feel that way because you've got all these salesmen on your phone hey you should totally buy this but it's actually a great tool for transporting money between generations now the reason I say it like that is because if you get the right type of policy, it can be tax free, you can cover, you know, you can pay very small amounts in the beginning based on your health quota and it can be a great way to actually pass on money to your future children. Now let's say that your children took out a life insurance policy on your name or you set up a life insurance policy that's dedicated to your children. What that ends up doing is now you know you've got quote unquote a guaranteed amount that's going to your children. So if you take a five million dollar life insurance policy on yourself, right, you know that when you pass away, you know, whatever happens, you go to a better place, your children are actually going to have five million dollars given to them as an inheritance that you can pass on. What that means is that you don't really have to worry about saving too much money while you're alive because any money you do pass on is going to go through something called an estate tax and what that means is they're gonna end up getting a fraction of what you really saved and wanted to give them because of taxes and all that stuff granted taxes can be good when it's allocated towards certain things but at the end of the day the tax code is a thousand pages or more right it's thousands of pages and it's all designed to help you minimize tax so at the end of the day your goal is to make sure that your children and future generations get as much of that pie as you've made for them. So by setting up a life insurance policy, you can enjoy all of your money. You can use it throughout your life. And what that means is better quality of life for you, increased uh, living standard because you're still living within your means, but now you've got this asset that's actually paying you, it becomes a stream of income really. So you protect yourself, you take care of yourself, your children are taken care of, tax free, ready to go. And at the same time, God forbid something happens, it makes sure, it makes sure that your family is taken care of, they're safe and they're good to go as life moves forward. Now the next option is 
pretty simple and I'm sure you've heard many people talk about it, real estate. So consider this, right? Basic price is dictated by supply and demand. The world is just one size. So we have an, a finite amount of supply. Whereas population is growing, people will always need a place to live. Therefore, the demand is always rising. That's, it. That's why if you look at real estate prices over the last, I don't know, 50 years, you'll see that it's exponentially grown. That comes from this equation of supply, demand, and inflation, which we're not going to get into in this video. But essentially, by investing in real estate, there's a couple different factors. Many people don't like real estate investors for the fact that, oh, you're buying property, you're making it more expensive, you're flipping it, you know, you're not investing in the community. But I want to take that back, right? At three tier investing, we try to take the mentality of how can we do certain things to increase our lifestyle without hurting others, right? Real estate is a great opportunity because you actively get to engage in communities right? You get to take a property that's been taken down because by buying these houses that have been blighted or that have been, you know, boarded up, A, you have a great opportunity of getting a property that doesn't have any squatters. B, you also get to renovate properties, which in turn raise the value of the neighborhood. Now we want to be careful because I know a lot of people also like to mention gentrification and all that, but at the end of the day, if your intentions are pure and you're flipping properties because you know it's going to help, you know, it, it's going to help the community. It's going to make property values go higher. You end up fixing that property. A, you've built a home for somebody to move in. B, you've helped the community because all the home prices went up. And C, you also get to put a pretty penny in your pocket for the hard work you put in. You get to create jobs for the people who are helping build the home. So there's a number of factors. And it's actually why real estate is one of the biggest markets because you get to help so many people in the same way. You get to own equity. And what happens is, when you own hard, cold assets, right, like real estate, you can actually leverage those. You know, there's a number of techniques like 1031 exchanges. You can use those to get more properties. You can use that to expand your portfolio, build your net worth, and you can then, once you've got more income, you can use that to give back to the community. And I know we mentioned that a lot in this video, but it's really, really important to remember that all of your actions should be taken consciously to know that you're not actively hurting anybody else. The next one I'm going to mention and the last one is pretty simple and it's invest, right? So currently if you're in the market, obviously everybody I know is either doing crypto or they're doing some type of stock investing through options or penny stocks or just straight long-term share ownership. It's one of the best skills to have. It's one of the best ones because ultimately what happens is even if you leave your money in a company you believe in, you don't have to manage it every day, right? If you're just looking from a long-term perspective, you can park your money into companies, into shares that you truly believe in, that you've done your research on, that you're confident will be better in a year, five years, 10 years. Perfect example is Tesla. If you look at how much their stock price grew, it's exponential. And that's the goal, right? If you can make your money work for you while you go do your nine to five, while you spend time with your family, while you're on vacation, you know your money is generating money. That's how you get the most opportunity to grow your wealth. That's what makes that financial curve go from linear to exponential because now it's not just you working for your income, it's you and your money. You've got an extra helper to build that net worth of yours. That's how you start building money. That's how you start building your net worth. And again, the whole goal is to build, accrue, leverage, grow again right you use that as a leverage and you grow from there and you build your portfolio and that's how you get to this point of 10 million dollars a hundred million dollars a billion dollar net worth right at the end of the day ceos like jeff bezos elon musk what did they do instead of investing just money right they started with nothing tesla was once worth nothing spacex was once worth nothing amazon worth nothing at one point but what did they do they had full equity because it was their child they gave up a little equity and put in a lot of blood sweat tears and time and what that does is if you look at the power of time right amazon was worth very little compared to what they are today in 2000 when bezos was taking care of you know getting amazon started he was you know very alive back then you know he had a passion and he went for it and what that investment did right he invested his time and he grew as a person to the point where he now owns a newspaper you know he owns amazon of course he's got a bunch of charities he's given back you know obviously people have mixed emotions about him but from a surface level he does have philanthropic initiatives and that's what he's been focusing on so that investment is not just your money it can also be your time and the last thing i want to leave it on is invest in yourself buy courses that you trust 
you know, learn from other people who may be 10 steps ahead of you, somebody who you feel like this is my role model, invest in them, right? If you want to be better at something, invest in yourself. Nobody became a master at guitar by just saying, eh, I'll get good one day. No, it started with failing, it started with practicing, it started with just putting in the effort as much as you can. The more effort you put in, the further you're going to go. Just depends on what you can afford with your time, with your money, with your resources. At the end of the day, the best thing you can do is invest. Because all that means is you're taking steps to move forward. You're going to fall, you're going to make mistakes, you're going to lose money. There are going to be moments. But if you're too scared to take the risk, you will never reach your maximum capability. And I think that's the note I want to leave this podcast on is continue growing, continue learning, continue achieving, and most importantly, continue failing. Because the more you fail, the more steps you take forward and people are too scared to fail. And that's why 90% of the world is willing to just be comfortable. But the people who take the risks are the one who hit the top. So with that, you know, if I've misspoken at any point, if I've offended anybody, my sincerest apologies. Hopefully this was of value to you and I look forward to talking to you next time.